if you guys don't know this already, I'm actually a huge Colorado Avalanche fan. My brother grew up playing hockey. His coach was from Denver, and so he has been an Avalanche fan his entire life. So when the Avs play the Kings, it's always really fun for us to have a sibling rivalry nights. Uh, our whole family gets into it now. Uh, and it's usually a pretty good game. And if he wins, then I am happy for him and his team. And if the Kings win, then he's happy for me and my team. It's not like when one of us plays the Sharks or the Blackhawks and we lose and it's just sadness all around. To give some context to the Avalanche in this contest, they are on the second night of a back-to-back. -back. They did play the Sharks last night, and they lost 5-1. to one. It was not a good game. It makes me sad to think about. Uh, the Avs right now are also going through a few goaltending issues. Their main goaltender, Varlamov, is uh, <clears throat> required to stay in Colorado because he is facing domestic abuse charges against him. Uh, this is something that I actually wrote about when Voinov was facing his domestic abuse charges. Uh, so he's in Colorado. Their backup, Barra, um, Rito Barra, uh, has a broken ankle, I believe. I was told this. I have a cold. My brain is slightly riddled. There's some kind of lower body injury, so he's out, which means that Captain Picard is in net. That is not how you pronounce his name, but I really like the idea of having a C Picard right opposite our Jedi Knight Quick. I think that's fun because nerd, nerd power. So anyway, uh, he had the flu yesterday, which means I'm pretty sure he still has the flu today, and quite a few of the Az players had it yesterday, so they were... They were really never going to be great against the Sharks, but I was really hoping that they would squeak out a win over the Sharks so that A, the Sharks wouldn't get the points, and B, then the Az would be happy, and then we could crush them today and I wouldn't have to feel guilty about it. Uh, sadly, none of those things happened, so <laughs> not a great day for me predicting things all around. Uh, let's break it down by period, because if the game ended at the end of the first period, the King wouldn't have a problem in the world. They outshot the Avalanche 18 to 5 in the first period alone. It was amazing. They were all over the ice. By the time Drew Doughty scored, uh, like halfway through the period, they were up in shots 13 to 4, which means that the Avalanche only got one in the last half of the period. That's not the point. Uh, so this goal came about in a very interesting way. Skilly was the first player to go off at uh, nine minutes and something, I believe. Uh, and then 53 seconds later, Milan Lucic, who has served his game suspension against the Sharks, interesting, uh, a couple of games ago, is back in the lineup and he goes into the penalty box. So it's four on four for a minute and seven seconds. And that four on four play had swung or was swinging into the king zone at the time that Skilly's penalty had expired. Uh, so it's Kopitar that starts the play and it's Doughty who finishes it. And he's credited with his first shorthanded goal by timing only. The penalty, I don't know exactly, but the penalty has expired one, maybe two seconds before Drew Exley shot it. So while technically it was a shorthanded goal, I don't think that's fair on the Avalanche or to Pickard to say that they gave up a shorthanded goal because of the way that the momentum had swung before that with the four on four. Uh, but good job, Drew Daddy. He now has a shorthanded goal on his his record. And it was it was gorgeous, guys. Let's face it. Drew Daddy's goals are always very pretty affairs. Uh, so that's the first goal. Uh, the second goal came pretty easily too uh and this is something that pickard had an issue with tonight and had we bore down on our chances mora really should have taken advantage of he is not so great with the lateral movement uh particularly when you're used to seeing someone like jonathan quick and the way that he plays he is incredible left to right lateral movement he's like a crab or a butterfly or something it's phenomenal to watch pickard didn't have that as much uh, so the Kings second goal was an absolutely gorgeous pass by Le Cavalier. He has been incredible for us. It's amazing to see what he can do on a team that really lets him play like that. Uh, so he has the gorgeous pass and 
it's, I want to say Lewis, like I said, I'm sorry, my brain is slightly riddled, who uh, gets the goal in, and the Kings are going into the second period sitting really pretty. Then during the second period, it's kind of like they forgot how to play hockey. <laughs> 43 seconds in, I think it was Duchesne scores on the breakaway, and, and Quick is like, Oh, the period start. Okay, okay, the period. Cool. I got this. It's cool, guys. I got this. It's fine. Uh, and then they score their second goal, and I want to say it's Landeskog. And again, Quick was not. He's gonna want that one back. Let's just say that. And suddenly, the Kings are halfway through. I mean, literally halfway through the second period, and they don't have a shot on goal at all. It was 10 minutes and 50, 46 seconds, I think, into the the second period before they got their first shot on goal. But we did score a third goal at the end of the second period. It was Dwight King. So it's Jordan Nolan, who is battling behind the net, and he gets it out in front and he does the cross ice or cross goalie crease, like I said, riddled brain today, apologies, uh, to Dwight King who buries the rebound. And that's the kind of thing that, like I said, Pickard hadn't been great at and had the Kings bore down on more of their chances, the third period wouldn't have been an issue. But they didn't and the third period was and here's why. The Kings completely dominated the first period. The Avalanche completely dominated the second period. And then the refs dominated the third. And that's the only reason I have an issue with this game. Because I hate it when refs decide things. Uh, if it had just been left up to the players, it would have been anyone's game. And maybe it would have gone into overtime. And that, I think, would have been a fair outcome for both teams. I think... Uh, that would have been really exciting to see. Uh, but the Avs didn't have the greatest chances at 5-on-5, five five, and the refs made two or three pretty bad calls that really cost the Kings at the end of the third. Uh, so the first, I will admit, the game time goal was completely our fault. <laughs> or at least the penalty we took that got it there is completely our fault. Uh, there was a coincidental minor, Daddy was the King in the box, and then Jake Muzzin makes a dumbass play and he ends up in the box and it's three on four and the Kings just can't stop it from happening basically. Now at the game, the scoreboard looked like there was still one second left of the coincidental minors, which if I'm reading that correctly meant that we still, still should have had 40 seconds of the Jake Muzzin penalty to kill. Uh, but I don't know if the scoreboard's off or if they were just feeling nice or what the deal was. Or if I don't know that rule as well as I think I do. Uh, but we ended up back at even strength after that and the goals were even. And then there's a pretty dodgy call on Tyler Toffoli. Which is immediately followed by a pretty dodgy call on Andre Kopitar. And knowing those two players on our team, they're not players you see in the box really ever they're players particularly Kopitar that you see up for the Lady Bing award they're they don't take penalties and I will hand it to Lori uh my other half of princesses of the puck she saw the Toffoli penalty really well and called absolute BS on that one and I saw the Kopitar penalty really well and it was an avalanche player who threw him off balance that caused him to have the high stick. He was entering the zone and they completely missed the penalty on him uh, before that and somehow called Kopitar. If they were roughing well at all, the minimum it would have been was a coincidental minor uh, because of what the abs player did. But really, it should have been a King's power play, not a King's penalty. And that's when they scored their fourth goal. And the Kings just couldn't catch up. There was another penalty with maybe three minutes left in the game, and so the Kings couldn't pull quick, and they couldn't get any momentum going. Not for lack of trying. I will say uh, Captain Picard did really, really well in that Kings' last push. At 30.5 seconds remaining, uh, the Avs took a Trevon penalty, I think it was, and so six on four for 30 seconds, and the, and the push that led up to that 
penalty for them was a really, really good push by the LA Kings. And they probably should have tied it up, but Pickard, Pickard was really good. Credit where credit's due. So, final score... 4-3, no overtime point, but the Kings are still sitting pretty in a playoff spot. I believe this win keeps the Abs in a playoff spot, so happiness all around here. Uh, as far as that goes, we go into the All-Star break, uh, which is a different format again this year. Lots of three-on-three, -three, which I find thoroughly entertaining at the end of 60 minutes of a real hockey game. We'll see how that, that goes as... 3-on-3 three three is an actual uh, game. But either way, enjoy your All-Star break. Uh, hopefully I'll be better by the time we get back for our next game. We will see you then.